This is a video describing some of the functionality around our new batch management functionality in Figshare. Um, so this is for institutional administrators only. Uh, if you're not an institutional administrator, you won't see this area or be able to have access to the area. But assuming you are, in the top right hand user menu, you have batch management. Now, it looks quite a simple screen uh, when you first access it, but there's an awful lot of power hidden behind this simplicity. And we're gonna talk through some of those aspects now. Uh, so it's primarily divided between two sections. Uh, it's the download of existing metadata uh, and the upload of uh, metadata and files to either create or amend uh, existing objects. Um, so talking through some of the principles, we'll go from top down. So this download metadata area here allows you to download either everything within your institution. So that would be uh, uh, both public and private metadata um, and also allows you to choose specific groups or you want to download everything across the whole institution. Um, so this obviously gives you everything, but you can choose uh, individual groups. Do individual groups, you'll need to uncheck all metadata, select the group that you wish, it's obviously our staging environment, and then once you start your metadata download, you're only going to receive a spreadsheet for that particular group or many groups, whatever works best for you. Um, we're going to show you the email how that looks in just a moment, but once you hit start metadata download, you'll see a success message. And this success message informs you that in the background, asynchronously, uh, your metadata download has been started. As soon as that's ready, you're going to receive an email to your registered email address uh, with the metadata download spreadsheet. If you're only downloading a small amount of metadata or uh, and it's not particularly busy time uh, when you when you try and do the download, uh, you should get that pretty much instantly. For large amounts of metadata or particularly busy periods, uh, it might take a little bit longer. Um, but you'll get that in your email as soon as it's ready. And we're going to have a look at what that sheet looks like in just a moment. Uh, the download of metadata is for all custom metadata fields and standard metadata fields uh, in your repository. And this can be really handy if you're wanting to create new objects, would be to download your existing metadata and use that download sheet as a template to create the upload sheet um, for the either creation or the amending of existing objects. The only thing you're going to need to do on the upload sheet which is not present on the download sheet, is if you wish to work with files on the upload sheet, you'll need to create a new column and you'll need to call that files. This is fully outlined in the uh, explanation here, which we'll have just a little look at. Um, we won't go through this in the video, but there's an awful lot of explanatory things here about how to work with it. Um, add that files column, and then you can add files file links to publicly accessible uh, download links to create the objects. Um, so after you've created your metadata sheet, and let's say you wanted to add my, uh, files as well, it's uh, choose file, select, uh, and start the upload. There's two additional options here, which are not present on the download. Um, number one is publish items. So if you create a bunch of new uh, items or do a, a bunch of amends. Um, they can all go to draft if you want. And so you can create items for any user that you have impersonation privileges to uh, within your repository. If you're an institutional administrator, that will mean pretty much anyone. Um, uh, you can create them straight into their account uh, without having to do any, any forms of impersonation. And you can choose to go ahead and publish those straight away if you want as well. Um, it's binary choice for everything on the upload sheet. So you can't publish some and leave some to draft. So if you need to have a mixed uh, choice, you'll need to do a couple of different uh, uh, upload sheets. Uh, and then a, a final option, if you have um, cura curation or the review module as part of your institution, there's an option to automatically approve any changes that you do via this method. Um, so that doesn't skip out on creating a review 
um, ticket within the system and um, it doesn't skip any of the versioning aspects, but what it'll do, it'll automatically create a, um, a review ticket. So as if it was gonna be reviewed by a human, um, approve it, mark that it was automatically approved by the batch management system with date and time. So you've got a nice audit trail there, ready for the future. Uh, and um, it will go straight to live. Once you have uploaded your metadata and files, Again, it's asynchronous, so these changes will start to happen as soon as we start to process them. Um, but we will then send you a success uh, CSV to your registered email uh, or failure, uh, depending on what's happened as well as you started to upload, um, outlining line by line what's happened to all of the things you've tried to create or edit, um, along with any reasons why uh, any of them might have failed. And we'll look at that again in just a moment. This is one of the first sheets that we're looking at. This is the download sheet. Um, a lot of this should be fairly self-explanatory. And again, there is uh, a lot of this outlined within the help article that will be linked as part of this video. Um, uh, things like article ID, account ID, group ID, title, authors, and how we lay them out. Uh, you can do categories, item type, keywords, description, funding. So this is pretty much everything that you can see um, on the edit item form as it exists now. If the object has a DOI, it will be present here. If the object has a private link generated, it will be present here. You can also see things like embargo details and embargo types, uh, which will be editable should you wish. Um, you can edit all embargo settings, um, as well as key dates around the article, um, references and resource ID, whether it's a metadata object, uh, as well as all custom fields. And these are some examples of how the custom fields look. Uh, and that's what your download sheet will look like. And this could be many tens of thousands of rows if, if, you, if, like, if you created a download sheet for all objects within your institution. This is an upload success sheet. It's a little bit uh, smaller, but what this does is take you through row by row. So for each row, uh, this references the row from the upload sheet that you did. So for example, row one, you'd then be able to go back and cross-reference that with the first row on the upload sheet in case you need to make any changes. Um, so it's an all or nothing principle. So everything has to be successful about the creation of an item for the, the item to be successfully created. 10 things, 10 changes requested, nine work, one doesn't, none of them will go through. Um, so this particular message is about um, trying to add files to a metadata only record, which is a slightly odd uh, message, but it could happen. Um, but it'll let you know whether the files were successfully uploaded, uh, how the metadata was, whether the embargo settings were successfully approved, uh, and whether the publish and um, review steps were successfully completed as well. So this is the success message that you will receive to your email after the upload of an upload sheet of metadata. This is an example of a upload metadata sheet, which is uh, again, very similar to the download sheet that we just looked at because it's basically all of the same data. Uh, the only key difference between the download and upload sheet is that for this, these items that I'm working with here, I wanted to amend some of the files. So I've created a new column at the end of the existing columns and I've called that files. Uh, and in there, I've put the and uh, links to two different publicly accessible files. Uh, and these files are gonna be uploaded uh, as part of that item creation. Um, for publicly accessible files, we support HTTPS, HTTP, as well as FTP links uh, for the uh, publicly accessible files.